Hey everyone, welcome to group break number 144. We got a nice little uh, 14 box hockey hobby mixer with everything from chronology to SP game use to artifacts, SPX, trilogy, series one and series two, all from this year except chronology was last year, um, but still really fun product nonetheless to open up. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Here we go, right into the team rams, three times on the names, three times on the teams. Switch on over to this, but again, thank you everyone for getting into the breaks. Uh, looking forward to this one. Uh, next week we'll probably, again, assuming no delays, probably have some extended. So, yeah, here we go. Good luck. Three times. Once. Twice. And third time. There are your names and your teams three times. Once, twice, and last time. All right. Stars on the honestly, stars one of the best teams to get. I would say across the mix. But anyways, here we go. Ryan, you've got the Flyers. Ken with the Canucks. Mark, you've got the Avalanche. Dalton with Vegas. Patrick with the Flames. Colin, you've got the Penguins. Evie, you've got the Blue Jackets. Blake with Chicago. Ryan with. Uh, Nashville, Kevin with the Capitals, Dave with the Ducks, Martin with the Hurricanes, Ryan, you've got the Red Wings, Brent P, you've got the Habs, uh, Ted with the Bruins, Michael with the Leafs, Bill with the Wild, Craig with the Devils, Paul, you've got the Sabres, Kevin with the Jets, Bill with the Oilers, Ted with the Sharks, Patrick with the Lightning, Ian with the Kings, Nick with the Rangers, Emil, you've got the Panthers, Michael with the Blues, Ivy with the Islanders, Craig with the Senators, Martin with the Yotes, and Jacob, you got the stars. There are your teams. Uh, also, I think all the uh, breaks that were, um, that happened over the past little bit uh, are all live now on YouTube, except for this week. This week's are still uh, trying something a little different with uploading them so but yeah that's good um yeah should be a fun break i am looking forward to this mix this mix is just like a little bit of everything you got some big hit potential you got some you know smaller uh hit potential with the young guns, you got the consistency. Uh, so we'll start with series one and series two. Uh, we'll probably start series one, then we'll do series two, and then we'll probably do artifacts, trilogy, chronology, either SPX or game use. So we'll do something like that. So here we go. Oh, I forgot to put, oh, I forgot to allow for trades here too. So one of those days, man. SP game used can go there. These two can stack onto here. And if you are interested in basketball, we do have some spots left in a basketball mixer. Uh, it's a all 1920 stuff. It's a so Zion's rookie year. We got cello a cello box of mosaic, and then two chronicle blasters, and then two mosaic blasters. So you just joined us, but. Not really seeing much action on the trade front. I mean, like, for the most part, it seems like people that had multiple spots got one at least one good team, which is nice, so. Um, yeah. And again, just before, again, before the break starts, because uh, we do have, like, wild card redemptions, artifacts will go to their actual, like, na the player on the checklist, because that checklist is live. Chronologies, uh, franchise history, XRCs, so pre-rookie cards, uh, that the names on those aren't known, so it'd be a 31 team random for them. But yeah, I uh, really don't see anything on the trade front. Let's get started. So we'll start off with Series 1 and go from there. Here we go. Might need more top loaders, but we'll see. We will see. Box 
one is empty. Let's get started. Ah. I was going to say we could rip and stack the hobby, but... Uh, actually, yeah, let's try it. Let's try it out. Let's do a rip and stack of Series 1. Series 2 can be, uh... If the base starts getting sticky, then we, uh, will stop, but... This just allows, you know, for a cleaner... Cleaner break. Yeah, uh, get the first stack done. Yeah, for those who haven't seen like the way this is done before, we normally do it just for retail, but it works well for series, like for multi-pack products. Uh, so like OPG Platinum is a good one. Um, series one, series two, just cause you know, you just, you're not expecting a hit in every pack. Like you, you got your young guns and stuff, but like it's pretty consistent. You know, every eighth card or so is gonna have a hit and not like you're not waiting on like a big card to decoy slow roll most of the time so here we go first half of box one let's see uh let's see a laugh like honestly let's, let's see a laugh arvidson trade thoughts i mean the rumors on the street were that nashville wasn't even going to protect him in the expansion draft so uh, they got what they could for him, and yeah, I fine. It's obviously less than what you would have expected, but Johansson for the Sabers. They obviously aren't in the uh, best of shoes to make that. Uh, Ottinger on the French Young Guns for the Stars. Good start there. Let's leave that one up after. Predominant of uh, Eric Stahl for the Wild. Oh yeah, we'll put that back there. Base, 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 base. Base, base, yep. Doc, rookie retrospective for Chicago. But yeah, I think pretty fair trade. Um, you know, not the uh, blockbuster that you'd think, but Yamamoto for the Oilers. Like two years ago, his trade value would have been insane. But obviously things change in a flat cap. Patrick Kane for Chicago. And I think that's, you know, just part of it. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, and Kane for Chicago. So a good kind of first half to the stack. Ottinger is a decent French young gun to get. Probably above average, I would say. And second stack, here we go. Barzell for the Islanders on the Dazzlers. Uh, Bowers for the Avs on the Young Guns. I think we, yeah, we only, do we only really have one Young Gun in that first half? Wow. Or, oh, no, that makes sense. Never mind. Uh, Garland for the Oats on the canvas. Yeah, Ottinger is definitely a hold for a couple years, for sure. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Patchetti for Vegas. Eight. Uh, Kout for the Abs. All right, so yeah, we did get our three. So, again, just... Go through the back, it's all, uh, we got our French for the box and it's not like series one or series two where it's, uh, things, but all base. There we go. But yeah, I think it's a good trade for, I mean, for LA, it doesn't make as quite as much sense to be completely honest. Um, they, I guess they're, they're in this awkward window where they either go now or in a little bit um the the best thing that la could do and i will say this for a while is trade your doughty right now because his value isn't going to be any higher he's probably like okay i think we got to stop because we got some sticky we got some sticky packs so we're stopping the uh stack here because yeah these are sticky ah i thought we were gonna be so smooth here This should be the hit. Yep, predominant of Panarin for the Rangers. 
But yeah, I like they really should have looked to trade him or trade Doughty. Uh, Thomas for the Blues, because you're going to get a King, probably a King's Ransom for him right now. At the very least, you'll get like a good assets and, um, you know, the right team will way overpay. Benson for the Oilers on the rookie portraits. All right, so there's our three hits. But like Arvidsson again, 28, like two years, two years left of his contract. Not the cheapest, not the most expensive, but, you know. Kind of just like there. I like him as a player. Kako for the Rangers on the debut dates. But like, you know, timing wise, I guess. I mean, their division next year is going to be fairly weak. We got a young gun canvas coming up. Up, uh, Robert for the Oilers on the young gun canvas. So extra young, two extra young guns in this box. But yeah, like if they can get rid of Doughty, if they can get rid of Kopitar, even like I love Kopitar. Don't get me wrong, but long term that value is not not there. Well, we already got we got we got one of the good ones here. Nice little laugh young gun for the Rangers. But yeah, they got, like, Byfield's really, really good. Um, their prospect pool is solid. Not the best in the league, but definitely, like, top, like, top five for sure. But again, counting your prospects is before they actually play games is always a bad idea because you never know how good they're actually going to be at the NHL level, so... All right, that gets us to our hit. Uh, Kempe for the LA Kings on the exclusives to 100. Just base on the rest. I hate sticky packs. Hate them. Also, by the way, I think Laugh is a hold at this point. I think he's been a hold for a while. I think he'll his play will go up over the next few years, so... Harkins for the Jets on the Young Guns. Base on the rest. But yeah. I had... The the biggest thing about the Arvidsson trade is that he I had him pegged for Seattle. And that was a big ad for Seattle. Based off of projections. So that's the biggest loss, I think. Barkov for the Panthers on the Worldwide. So the biggest... Like, honestly, the biggest loss there is probably for Seattle. Because Nashville had... It sounds like they might go with like even six and two for protect, like protecting six defensemen, uh, which is wild. But hey, uh, Aho for the Hurricanes. But I think uh, their protection list is definitely different. It was last time too. And again, a reminder like for the expansion draft, you can either do eight skaters, which. Most people, like, revert that to four and four, but there are teams that will do, like, multiple defensemen, like, five defensemen, so. Uh, Mikey Anderson for the Kings. Solid. These are all base and all stuck together. And it is not fun. <laughs> Canvas left, I think. Yeah, Lani well, Canvas for the Jets. I'll just get all the base unstuck here, but. There we go. There's those. And the rest are good. There we go. So, yeah, biggest blow is to Seattle. Uh, I think everything else about that trade is fine. Like,. I think you're betting on getting a player who's going to regress back to more what they were. And I, I like Arvidsson as a player, so. Honestly, I... That's a tough one. I, for the right price, I think for sure. Um, you know, we might, we might, this might finally be the year where we see a lot of, um, Stars get traded with Eichel especially, but you know, we say that every year and nothing really happens, right? So 
But I think if teams are interested in Eichel, they have to move money out. And, you know, if St. Like, Louis could use Eichel. You know, Eichel, O'Reilly is a 1-2 center punch. That would be really good for a team, right? Wait, Buffalo could have had that. I said that a little bit in jest, but, you know. Uh, Marcia So for Vegas on the canvas. So I, I think there's a chance that he gets moved. Um, you know, given injury concerns and just level of play. Ustamenko for the Flyers. Or, like, where they kind of fit in right now. I think looking at moving him for the right price is absolutely, like, something you should do. And there... They're, Really is no such thing as an untouchable NHL player. Uh, French variation of Fiala for the Wild. Like every single player in the league has a price. If you if you're the Oilers and the Leafs come up to you and being like, "Hey, we'll give you Matthews and you know Nylander for you know uh, McDavid and Neal," I'm pretty sure you take that. Uh, Frost for the Flyers. So, uh, you're not doing your job as a GM if you're not listening to every single trade offer that comes your way. You can laugh at some of them, but, you know, dry settle for the Oilers. You really do need to do your due, dil due diligence, make sure that every, um, every stone's left unturned, kind of. So, Mers Lickens for the Blue Jackets. But yeah, given it's a flat cap, I think we're going to see a lot of, like, kind of just sideways transactions. Um, you know, money in, money out. The Duncan Keith one's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Predominant of Yossi for the Predators. I honestly think that, uh, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay assets to get Keith. They'd have to be assets coming in, or at least bad contract going out Suzuki for the Habs on the Dazzlers you know something like I mean people brought up the Canucks and it's like honestly like Tyler Myers for Keith okay but Berdine for the Jets you know you, you need to move money out to bring someone like that in and like for Seattle it doesn't make sense just to like pay for him Maybe if there's other stuff along the way, sure, but high skin for the stars. Like if you can absolutely get like a couple of draft picks with them or something like that, take them in, great. Because Chicago is one of those teams that like, I think with Nylander not being eligible now uh, for the expansion draft bought for the Senators, because uh, he is exempt because he only has two pro years which is really weird compared to Makar. Like he's played, he's had four seasons where he's played games in the NHL, but he essentially hasn't passed the games played threshold. So you'll love it for the Canucks. But yeah, uh, with him being, you know, available, it's gonna be either Godet or Camp that gets exposed and probably will be Camp, I would imagine. Bellows for the Islanders. So it's not like you're gonna get someone major there. I mean, you could get Riley Stillman, but his cap hits a little higher. He might end up being able to get both Subans, which would be funny. Well, two Subans. JT Miller for the Canucks on the game jersey. That's actually a uh, game jersey that you know what year that jersey's born in. Because you know it. It's a 2021 card, or 2020-2021 card. Uh, so you know it's going to have to be from last year because it's his only year as a Canuck, so... Uh, Primo for the Habs. Well, from 1920 at least. Yeah, I think there's definitely a few interesting pieces. Uh, the last Seattle mock I did was like, I'm just like, man, this team's not going to be great. Uh, Rask for the Bruins. Like, they're they're gonna get. They're probably gonna be able to get you know similar value to Vegas. They won't have. I, I don't think they'll quite be full like success that Vegas had year one. Uh, Bishop for the Stars on the worldwide. Because I don't think a team is going to do what Dale Talon did. 
And like, honestly, if you go back and you redraft Vegas's draft, you take away Dale Talon doing Dale Talon things. Um, Bodin for Chicago on the Young Gun canvas. So, you know, you protect you protect Smith, Marcia So, and another forward, uh, Sevier, I think, over Petrovic. And then you don't trade, you know, Smith for a fourth type of thing. And uh, McMichael for the Capitals on the Young Gun, solid one there. You know, you don't trade Smith for a fourth round pick. Uh, you, you go through that draft and it's like, they're still okay, but they're not. They're nowhere near as good as what they want. Uh, Yossi for the Predators. So, like, there are very few actual teams that would benefit from just losing. Like, in comparison to Vegas, there are very few teams that actually benefit from trading uh, stuff for players. Kratsov and Laugh on the uh, Young Gun Checklist, actually. It's the Young Gun Checklist. It doesn't get sleeved. I, like... One of those teams is Carolina, but even then, I think they're smart enough to be like, yeah, we don't, like, unless you're taking our bad money, like, we're not going to incentivize you to take a player that, you know, we're going to lose anyways. Pajot for the Islanders. So, it'll be interesting to see kind of how deals get done and where Seattle can extract value. Because that's ultimately what made Vegas good was the fact that they got all these side deals. It wasn't the fact that they... Like, it wasn't the expansion draft itself. It was all the side deals. Natchez for the Hurricanes on the rookie retrospective. So just something to keep in mind uh, for the Seattle expansion draft. And, you know, and there are, again, there are very few teams that are actually worth trading stuff out. Uh, I could check for the Senators on the Pink Dazzlers. So. I think my count was, like, oh, it was small, like, I think I had, like, maybe three or four teams, but, like, even Toronto. So, like, Toronto's rumored pro protection list right now is, like, protecting four defensemen and four forwards and leaving Kerfoot exposed. But it's, like, I think you just leave Hole exposed there. Oh, and because, like, Kerfoot's infinitely more valuable to me than Hole. Um, and then you just, you know, one of Dermot, Hole, or, yeah, one of Dermot or Hole kind of just get moved there uh like you just lose them and like i think there's a certain price that you could pay for them like you could pay like you know hey third round pick take this guy instead but like you can't start paying too much because at a certain point it just impacts your value too much right like what kind of player can you get with the assets you're giving up along with the other player that you're losing wolf for the leafs So St. Louis is what a team that I think is, uh, unless they trade Vince Dunn, Vince Dunn is gone. Like, he will be in Seattle. And that is a huge pickup. Uh, Ottinger for the Stars on the uh, Portraits. And Vasilevsky for the Lightning on the French variation. French variation. Uh, where Seattle's going to probably do really well in the draft is with their uh, defense. Like, lots of aging defensemen. The... Main teams to pressure there are uh, Hackenpaw for the Ducks. Uh, the main teams to pressure there are Calgary because they might, like, if they decide to protect 4-4 four and four and, like, let either one of Giordano, Anderson, Tanev, or uh, Hannafin get exposed, then you're, like, if they do 4-4, four and four, they're leaving a good forward. If they do, you know, three defensemen, seven forwards, Marner for the Leafs, then you're getting one of those d good defensemen that you can flip. Same thing with the Devils. It looks like you're getting probably either get Butcher or Subban from them. And again, with Subban, take them, flip them at half retained, and profit. The tune off for the Sharks on the Young Guns. So that's where I think that's where Seattle's value is going to come from is just flipping defensemen, which is fine. Liam Foody for the Blue Jackets on the rookie materials. Where are the other teams? Yeah, like Colorado's another interesting one. Uh, DiPietro for the Canucks on the rookie portraits because they've got to move. Like, if Eric Johnson doesn't waive his no move clause, then they've got to go four and four, and then you're getting a good forward from them. Like, someone who is definitely a solid. McCarr for the Avalanche on the award winners. Uh, 
But if he does wave, then you can threaten them with the, hey, we're going to take Eric Johnson line of it and see if they give you anything to not take him. Uh, Barzell for the Islanders. So. And it, like a lot of teams were actually smarter. They didn't fully sign, like get, didn't sign players that they weren't planning on protecting. Ottinger for the Stars. Uh, they weren't signing players that they weren't planning on protecting uh, to contracts past this year because one of the like main stipulations of the expansion draft for Seattle is that they have to take 20 contracts that happen next year. So uh, Zamula for the Flyers on the retro. BGB, there is a weird scenario where you could have uh, the line combination was Jack Quinn, uh, Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes with Luke Hughes and Quinn Hughes as your defenseman. Is that red? No, I don't think so. Uh, Jordan Gross for the Yotes. There is actually a scenario where that could, like, you could, you could actually conceivably make that as your line combos, which would be hilarious. Could you imagine that power play? Radish for the Rangers. Quinn, Quinn over to Hughes, up to Hughes, down to Hughes, over to Hughes, up to Quinn Hughes, down to Jack Quinn, Jack Quinn to Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes over to Jack Hughes. That would just be a nightmare. Would not want. Uh, Geeky for the Hurricanes. All right, not missing anything. Yeah, uh, McShay, McMichael, McDavid. I mean, a McDavid, McMichael, Eichel line would be hilarious, too. Uh, Delandria for the Stars. Yeah. Barkov for the Panthers. Yeah, we'll stay online for a little bit after this break to try to get basketball filled. McLeod for the Oilers. Uh, at least get it somewhat full. Again, if it fills over the weekend, we will break it on a weekend date. I will send an email out. But Broberg for the Oilers on the retro. Or we'll, we'll get an email sent out or something like that to everyone that's in it. But hopefully it can fill tonight. Ant whistle for Chicago on the blue. Now, Chicago's been quiet on the young guns so far. And they have a lot of them. Crabs for Vegas. Oh, there's a hog liner for the Canucks. Nice one there. Yeah, it's it's rare for Chicago to be this quiet. Hoaglander's honestly probably someone that you buy right now. I haven't checked his prices in a little bit, but his underlying numbers, like if that dude starts scoring, oh boy. Ooh, we got a young gun canvas coming up here. Uh, looks like Chicago to me, but foodie for Columbus and yep. Hagel for Chicago. Honestly, solid one. Probably their I would I would say that like they're their best uh one of their best players, one of their best forwards, so Calfoot for the Lightning on the Young Guns. And last pack. He was actually before the start of this year, Hagel was who I was picking from Chicago. But obviously that is not happening now. Oh, high gloss! There we go. That's the first high gloss we pulled from, I think, Series 2. Tarasenko, number 10 for the Blues. So a team you wouldn't really expect much of. Comes in here, gets a high gloss. That is stand worthy. Just because rarity wise, they're really rare. So there we go. Cool card there. And one of the things that I like highlighting while we break are the cards that are, like, tougher to pull. So, because, you know, 
Sometimes it can just be... Like, it may not be the best player, but... Yeah, I mean, high glosses... Of base players probably shouldn't sell for that much. That's just, that's someone like me who's just like, I don't care if I sell it, I'm just gonna list it really high and take offers. If I get one that I like, I'll take it. Mind you, I've had offers on stuff on eBay that my email hasn't, my email's put in junk and I've missed them. And it's like, oops. Lorentz for the Hurricanes. It does seem like the market's kind of slowing down a little bit, which is fine. It's the off season. It's kind of a thing if you're new to hockey cards in general. It does generally slow down around this time of year. Uh, Latuna for the Sharks on the portraits, and Ethan Bear for the Oilers on the French variation. Oh yeah, Louis for seven fifty. Think of any hockey cards he could buy next year. I'm sitting on the bench. Turkov for the Blue Jackets. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for extended next week just to see kind of what Easter eggs. You know, upper decks put Easter eggs in it. Uh, and you small for the senders. Like, almost guaranteed there are Easter egg hits in that. So, I'm excited for that because I think it's a product that gives them a lot of, you know, customizability or freedom to do stuff ty smith for the devils and they do they do a good job of hiding easter eggs in products and like just unique cards and stuff so that's i'd say one of their big strengths Ooh, another jersey card you'll levy for the canucks on the rookie materials excited for it excited for the 0506 retro young guns those look just sick so uh, Lindstrom for the Red Wings on the Rookie Portraits. Try settle for the Oilers. I remember when I like, first started doing Seattle expansion, like mock drafts, Detroit was a team that legitimately, uh, I think we were taking Patrick Rybar. And, like, if you haven't heard of him, that's probably because he doesn't have an NHL contract. Nature's for the Hurricanes. Uh, but, like, we need to hit the goalie requirement, so we need to hit three. And he was just like, all right, well, let's just waste it on him because I don't want any, you know, dead cap coming into the next year. So, but now it looks like the Setcher might be available. Broberg for the Oilers. There's rumors that Detroit might uh, not protect Setcher. And if they don't protect Setcher then by all means, you are taking them if you're Seattle. Hellebuck for the Jets. Setcher is a very, like, capable middle four defenseman. Saw it a lot while he was with the Canucks. Uh, De Rosier for the Panthers. Every year he'd start on, uh, he'd start on the you know, third pairing and work his way up to the top by the end of the year. Uh, Vedimo for the Hurricanes on the Young Guns. Uh, Svets, Svetch, and... Oh, we need like a... We need like a dog name there. Uh, Burdine for the Jets. That seems really discolored. Svetch, Fetch, Beagle. It's like you're saying Fetch, Fetch. I don't know. But yeah, there's definitely some fun name combos there. God, I hate all the base cards stuck to each other. There we go. Joseph for the Penguins. Like they need to, they need to give the series one and series two base cards the same treatment that they give MVP because like those cards just slide. They feel better too. Uh, ooh, this is a canvas checklist, so we got a random to do here. Uh, Kachuk and Kachuk, so Flames and Senators. 
Senators is Craig. Flames is Patrick. So we'll random that at the end. Because, again, I don't think we're getting another one. If we do, because it is Kachuk and Kachuk, so there is a chance that they're, like, featured on a dual memorabilia card or something in SP Game Used or Artifacts or even Trilogy. Um, if we do that and one of those wins it, then we'll give the canvas checklist to the loser, but alarm me for the penguins. But for the most part, that'll just be it, you know, random on random.org. Retro coming up. Mason Marchment for the Panthers on the retro. Another, another interesting rumor is that Drew N might be available from the Habs with the sweetener for Seattle. And like, depending on what that sweetener is, yeah, because if Drew N can just play half decent, then you're solid. Is that a good one for the Flames? Seattle's main problem is going to be having elite talent forwards. Like, you're probably drafting Sam Steele from the Ducks. Um, so you hope that he becomes someone really good. Uh, we got uh, True for the Sharks. That was not a double. We haven't got our Dazzlers yet, right? No. Or a big young gun for the box. Heigl for Chicago. Oh, no, I guess Ty Smith is the big young gun for this crop. There's a, there's a Chicago young gun. Man, they've been quiet. This is the first time that it's been like, Chicago's been quiet. Another young gun canvas. So we, we crushed the odds on the extra young guns. Uh, Norris for the Senders and Brome for the Red Wings on the young gun canvas. Not, not one of the young gun canvases you want to see, but you take it. Uh, Pino for the Capitals. Yeah, I forgot Ty Smith is the headliner of this crop. This is the, like, one worst crop, I think, in the, uh, in the whole set. Uh, price photo variation for the Habs. Nice. Alright, so, uh, Series 1, Series 2, Appetizer is over. Now it's time for the main course. Let's get to artifacts. 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 Does whatever artifacts can. Will we see some patches? Or will we see an auto fax? I hope it's not an auto fax. That is a really bad Spider-Man parody. I won't quit my day job, don't worry. All right, let's go. Let's see something big, though. Artifacts is quiet the past few boxes, so here we go. Uh, Horvat for the Canucks on the orange. Actually, decent decent shape for an orange. For a parallel. And artifact chipping is always an issue with these. Um, never, like, the cards are never perfect just because of the colored stock. Connect me for the Flyers to two ninety nine. Um, so like, again, anytime you have like non-traditional stock, like card stock, it, every little bump, every little nick, every little ding just shows up a little bit more. So got a blue and it's a bolt it is Basileski to four ninety nine for the bolts. All right. And a legend who is Yager for the All-Stars. I believe this is, uh, yeah, this is a 96 All-Star game. So with this card, uh, because it's got an actual designated All-Star game, we look up that All-Star game, just so happens to be wearing the jersey of the team. It's a Penguins card. Um, if, it, if that actual All-Star game wasn't listed, then we would have gone to most games played, which is also the Penguins. Um, but yeah. That's a Penguins card. Here we go. Robertson for the Leafs on the uh, Orem. This would be a short print. Robertson for the Leafs on the Orem. 
Here's our rookie redemption. Let's go with... Who are you going with? Let's go with... Philadelphia. Feeling Philadelphia. Ooh, it's a wild card. So 220. 220 is... Uh, Lankton for Chicago. So actually, solid one there. Like, out of all the wild cards you could get... Uh, probably one of the best ones. One of the better ones, at least. So... Obviously, like, that's in the now, long term. Uh, I think, you know, Kratzoff might be better, but I just need to write Chicago on this so I don't forget. Yeah, 220. Lankinen. Sneak it in. There we go. All right. I want to see a patch, or at least Jersey Auto, or something. Something cool, right? Well, it's not a laugh rookie jersey. It is a uh, course call for the Leafs to five ninety nine. Probably legitimately one of the worst jerseys that you could hit on the checklist. Something different here. Oh, this is going to be one of the, uh, yeah, Braden Holtby for the Capitals on the Lord Stanley's Relics. So, harder to hit jersey card. Not worth the ton, unfortunately. So, lackluster box of Artie, but got another one. Got another one. Yeah, it's weird how artifacts, like, you can get some absolutely insane boxes, and then you can get some that are just, like, three jersey cards wild card rookie redemption like i wish they would kind of i know it's tough to like on one hand i wish they would balance out the box a little bit better but on the other hand like you also just want to hit that super high roll box barzell for the islanders to 3.99 on the stars ruby Got an emerald. Emeralds are 99. Uh, Olafson for the Sabres, numbered 70, 70 of 99. Copper stars come up, and it's Wheeler for the Jets to 299. So parallels are looking okay. And a blue. Is that? That looks very similar. Nope, it's Bobrovsky for the Panthers. So, other Florida base goalie to four ninety nine. dollars Ooh, this could, be a, this could be something special. That's definitely a different subset. We'll save that till then. We'll do the redemptions next. Winnipeg Jets. That's Logan Stanley, I believe. Yep. Logan Stanley for the Jets. Jersey card coming up. No laugh. Bellows by the glove. Yep. Number 10 of 599. Keeper Bellows for the Islanders. And no patchy good time today. Wish we got a patch, but... I, that card could be sick because it's definitely a different set. Stamkos for the Lightning on the Remnants. So one of the best ones that you could hit there. And it goes, I think it goes this way. Nice for Dallas. Top 12 rookie signatures of Jason Robertson. These are case hits. Super, super tough pulls. And one of the best rookies on the year. Well, uh... Get him on the stand. It's so weird to me that he has like top 12 rookie auto, but yet he wasn't one of the people that they put on the uh, 25, 20, 25th, like the, you can't get the retro young gun variation extended of him. Because I don't think he was on the checklist, which is really weird, so. 
given the year he had and everything like that, but you know. All right, here we go, trilogy time. And as always, the hits are normally in these top two packs on the right side, so. Start with everything else first. Hopefully you get some bonus hits and go from there. All right. Uh, Turkov, ooh, yeah, there's a bonus hit right there. Turkov for the uh, Blue Jackets. Uh, Joseph on the Rookie Premier's autograph to 199 for the Penguins. And then a Foodie uh, Rookie Super Sage Ruby to 999 right behind it. Nice Joseph Auto. I think that probably will end up being a bonus. Got a blue, uh, I forget what they're called, uh, rookie renditions. Kratz off for the Rangers and Harley for the Stars on the blue. That color combo is just, I wish they would color code these a little bit because that just doesn't look great. It's a 399. Like that blue with that green, just no. Especially that much green. Uh, Lawrence for the Hurricanes. This card's got some chipping in the bottom corner, just as a heads up. And a lot of a lot of actually like trilogy stuff I've noticed more and more has dings than if you really start looking for them. Robertson for the Leafs on the rookie to 9.99. Like if you really start looking, the corners aren't the best. Um, the edges aren't super great. On the foil stuff, it's normally okay. On the like main card stock, like the super stages and the renditions, like it's better than last year, but it's still rough. So, uh, Kid Lennox for Columbus, and there's a red on red of uh, Evans for the Habs to seven ninety nine. See that looks good. Team color matching all day. Take that all day. Uh, rookie jersey, I believe. Alexia for the Capitals. And, no, nope, vet jersey. Kachuk for the Flames. Vet jerseys are tougher to hit. Not numbered? No, not numbered. Some of you say numbered those, but not this year. And, ooh, we got a thick card, so either a patch or puck. I want to say it's going to be a puck, but who knows. Uh, Benson for the Oilers. And... Uh, Yalmerson for the Yotes on the signature puck. So nice card. Team that you're not expecting to hit, but pretty good, pretty good auto there. Got most of his auto in on the puck. Like used every single inch of that card that he could. Satisfied. You know, not the biggest name, but cool card. On to the next box. Let's see, uh, what team's been really quiet? The Wild have been quiet. Uh, Chicago's been, for Chicago they've been quiet. So, do that same thing again. Two hits down there. Get rid of the styrofoam. Get rid of the box. Bring it back and here we go. All right. Uh, Krebs for Vegas and Yellison for the Flames to 9.99, and just the base on the back. I want to see something crazy here, though. We're due for something big this break. Uh, Lozergen for the Leafs again, a little bit of a corner ding on that one, uh, and same with the Harley actually corner ding on that one. So uh, level three though to 2.99, actually. Ebay one of one, two ninety nine of two ninety nine. Focus. There you go. Ebay one of one right there. It's been a while since we pulled one of those. Uh, Gage Quinney for Vegas and Romanov for the Habs to four ninety nine. They're one of the more quiet teams. It's a nice little level two. Again, same thing. Uh, Actually, that's not even my fingerprints on the card, but definitely like some fingerprinting on the card and a little bit of a corner ding there. So.
not again still solid though like not the like just not it's not gonna grade out as a 10 like eight and a half maybe but nice little romanoff again wish it was a game action shot but they did what they could do in the short amount of time that they had so uh bowers for the abs again for the abs the bottom's really chipped up there and hack and pop for the ducks to 499 so here should be our two hits first up is a jersey card and it is well first up we got a mcleod for the oilers on the renditions and harley for the stars to 499 he's been all over this break and another thick one oh we have a redemption who's a redemption this this could be a vet foodie for the blue jackets and oh oh uh signature pucks yeah think you'll take a caprice off there nice little caprice off rookie signature pucks for minnesota bill there you go that's that's the hit of the break. They've been quiet. They've been quiet. And then they're just like, here we are. We're here. Don't worry about us. We were due for something big. And there it is. With with trilogy this year, I knew it was like Cena Redemption is either gonna be a vet or a big rookie because they had to sneak them in. So and oh boy, that's a big rookie. All right, let's do chronology up next. And then I think SP game use and then end on SPX. SPX has the absolute highest potential, I think. But SP game use is the more consistent. Ah, that's tough. SPX is the highest potential. It can also be the most lackluster, but it's the highest potential. And I think you gotta just end on the the potential there all right chronology time Ooh, we got a letter in a good spot or at least a thick card it might be a it's a timeless memory so we'll go from the back all right here we go i like this auto cliff running for the canucks uh brooks like for the capitals uh ryan Suter for the wild to 222 on the base and ooh, that that's a that that's a uh, Blake uh, chronology timeless memories patch auto Kirby Doc numbered to thirty five and that is just as good. Ooh, that that's a spicy pull. All right, Ottinger, I'm sorry. Caprizov, you can kind of stay in the middle, but like, yeah. My this is like my favorite card design and just money, absolute money card. In terms of like just visuals. <laughs> that's a that's a good good little chronology box too. The vet autos weren't horrible. Uh, that Caprizov, I think that'll that should be cheaper than the artifacts one but i don't know it's tough because it's not numbered so all right we got a time capsule i believe nope i think we got a diamond then if we don't have a time capsule uh shea weber for the habs peter bondra for the capitals there you go alex burrows for the canucks and yeah diamond relics for the sharks of uh jumbo joe 35, so nice little uh, diamond. Uh, lab created, obviously. Not that there's really any difference, because, you know. I think I ran out of uh, 180s. Uh, Blake, I might be, I might have that Burroughs, actually, but yeah. Nice little Jumbo Joe Diamond. All right, should we do SP Game User or SPX? Should 
Should we do SP game? I think I think we do SP game used, and then SPX. I just it feels wrong not leaving SPX to last. We'll see how the box of Spigoo goes. If it's a good box, we might just... Yeah. Oh. Alright. It's a thin thin pack, so... Yeah. I was thinking about doing the Burroughs nameplate, actually. I think I have two. Of the, uh... What is that? This really doesn't want to open. Come on. There we go. Lots of Holtby in this break. All right, how many cards deep are we going here? We'll go, we'll go to here. Oh, we'll go, yeah, we'll go to, this, this is, this is a really good box. Uh, 180, 180 on that one. Like, Honestly, the names in this box are insane. Uh, McKinnon for the Avs on just the plain jersey. So, like, good card there. Holtby for the Capitals on the All-Star Fabric. So, like, not the greatest name. But Soderstrom for the Yotes uh, on the Rookie to 299. Dalling for the Sabres to 265. We'll go to the back because, like, this card isn't better than the card right behind it. Uh, Drysaddle and McDavid dual jersey for the Oilers. In from the All-Star Skills. That's when Connor McDavid went really fast. But yeah, 180, 180 on the dock. And how about a Mitch Marner autograph for the Leafs? That's a that's a pretty good pull. Again, not numbered, but really strong card. Like the the names in that box of SP game use were just crazy. You know, Mc McKinnon jersey, McDavid dry settled jersey, Marner autograph that's super tough to pull. Uh, honestly, high gloss just goes bye bye. Yeah, yeah. SB game use is definitely a uh, hit or miss. I've seen some pretty silly boxes. All right. Well, oh four and twenty four on the box numbers. That was, that was a really, like, really solid just name box. You know, I mean, the rookie wasn't the best. Darlene, former first overall pick, obviously hasn't quite lived up to the hype, but I think that's more of a Buffalo thing than a Darlene thing, which, ironically, now it's becoming a Darlene thing, but... All right, where should we end on this one? Uh, there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, Nick... Hope you're happy. I, like you said, it'll either lift you up or kick you down. And well, I mean, the Rangers will know that. Uh, Frank Kuz for the Avs. Pashnak for the Bruins. Slavin for the Hurricanes. Bernie Nichols on the Legends to 235. Sharon Govich, number 33 of 199. And I mean, it's upside down. But I think that's the first laugh auto that we pulled for the Rangers. Who would have thought SP Game Use just bringing the heat? Marner Auto, Laugh Auto. Whew. Like, yeah. All day, every day. Honestly, we're just getting another standout here. You can slide there. You can go there. Uh, so, this break was... Uh, all of a sudden went from like kind of after that box of trilogy like after the first box of trilogy it went from like kind of like okay it's it's good some good stuff some better stuff to like just cranking out heaters left and right awesome awesome stuff here and like the thing i like about you know this top line here is that it's fairly like fairly spread out it's not Obviously not perfect, but all right. All right, here we go. 
Oh, uh, extravagant materials of McKinnon for the Avs. The second McKinnon jersey for the Avs. If I see something thicker, I'll probably save it. And if it's not a shadow box, I don't think it's a shadow box. So, looking Broberg. -y. Yep. Uh, finite rookies of Broberg for the Oilers. You can love those cards. They look really nice with the metal inserts, but obviously not the biggest pull. All right, we'll go to this card. All right, gets off for the Ducks on the jersey. They're a team that's been really quiet, so this should be the big hit. Oh, dear. Hopefully it's, uh... Superscripts autograph for the Edmonton Oilers of Connor McDavid. Yeah. Uh, Bill, you, you had the Wild, you had the Oilers, you got the Kaprizov, you got the McDavid. I mean, like... Like, what more? I, yeah, we gotta take, uh, this is a 130, right? Yep, it's a 130. Uh, not numbered, but, I mean, like, the Robertson case hit actually has to come off. We've gotta move, like, the Kirby Doc actually has to move out of the center. Like, a laugh rookie auto isn't in our center. In, isn't in the center of our break hits. Uh, is, I mean, not like a ton in terms of like other cards, but still pretty penny. Like honestly, the Caprizov might outsell that, but but yeah, like it's still a really really good pull, so. It's less than what you'd expect in comparison to other sports, is I guess the best way to put it. So, there's still room to grow on McDavid. If he ever wins the Stanley Cup, oh boy. Here we go. Ooh, Buffalo getting in on the action with a player that no longer plays for you, but Eric Stahl on the base to 299. I love, like, just the base design in SPX just looks so cool. Like, it actually looks like the player is popping out, and I love it. It just sucks that it takes up like a hit slot. Uh, all right. We can roll. Oh, it's backwards. Uh, Obsidian rookies of Colazar for Vegas to 349. I love these cards. These cards are super nice as well. The UD black is honestly like a really nice subset. I'll save that up because those cards are fingerprint. This is this is super thick, so we'll save that. Well, Edmonton, when you're hot, you're hot. How about a Ryan Nugent Hopkins autograph? Ryan Nugent Hopkins on the auto. Not numbered, but again, just the design of the card is just so nice. Fresh off his eight-year, $41 million contract. And like final pack, this, I don't know. This could be insane, because it is purple, and it is obsidian. That is Bowers? Yep, for the uh, Colorado Avalanche, numbered 15, just missing the jersey number, 35 on the obsidian patch of Shane Bowers. This card is very, very beautiful. The camera in here and the lighting doesn't do it quite the justice, but whew, that's a wicked card. All right, we got, we got one random to do. Uh... For, for a canvas checklist. So we'll do that. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, so three times on that. We'll do we'll do a recap for this video. Because that was just stupid. Uh, so we'll get this set up for three times. Uh, ooh, is everything okay? I got a welcome to the chat. Which is normally a sign that my internet is connected. Here we go. Three times on the random for the canvas. Team on top gets it. Once, twice, and third time. Calgary, that is yours. Honestly, 
both those teams were kind of on the quiet side today. So I think I think actually Calgary hit less. So uh, yeah, let's let's do a recap. I don't know why it's like on top of that, but all right. What's recapable? That's recapable. Honestly, like that's recapable. That's recapable. The diamond's good. That's good. And that's just a cool card. It's a McDavid jersey. All right. We we brought the bangers today. Like absolutely brought the heat for this break. We're we're doing a recap. Haven't done one of these in a while. But like this break was just top to bottom. Like actually at the end, the top wasn't the best, but the end, oh boy. So McDavid dry saddle, all star skills duel. Uh, the Shane Bowers pack, like just beautiful card to 35 for the Avs. Ottinger French young gun, Jumbo Joe for the Sharks on the diamond, Tarasenko high gloss, uh, Jason Robertson on the top 12 signature. That's a case hit. Nugent Hopkins auto. Huh. And then like, honestly, probably something like this. I don't know. So like Marner Auto for the lease, Laugh Young Guns, the beautiful Doc RPA. Like this is rookie year, so this is an RPA. Uh, the Laugh Authentic Rookies Auto, the uh, McDavid Auto, and like the Kaprizov. I like this break, the top end of this break was just crazy. So I'm glad we ended on SPX. I wish we ended on the McDavid Auto, but overall, Really solid break. Thanks for watching. And yeah, see you on the next hockey break.